NBA 2K25, it seems like there's going to be a return of demigod builds. Now, maybe not demigod builds like NBA 2K21, but builds are going to be better than NBA 2K24. Now, the reasoning behind this is because, like I showed in my last video, you actually get more attributes in NBA 2K25 to work with than you do in NBA 2K24. But there were two things that were missed when it comes to the builder for NBA 2K25. Now, Brutal Sim actually pointed out the first part of it, kind of showing how they figured out a way to make it balanced by still giving us more attributes. Y'all check this out. I saw how 2K add a lot of restrictions to the builder in NBA 2K25, and I think a lot of people missed it. They pushed the layup, the driving layup, all the way to 99. By leveling that one attribute up, how much other attributes was affected that one attributes putting up, up to 99 affected 12 different attributes but now i went on nba 2k24 and i maxed out that same attributes for the same exact height weight and wingspan build it only affected eight different attributes now not only it affected eight but how much did it affect this eight? Barely. Now that is true. You see right here, I slowed it down and got the screenshot. You see, you start off with the 58 driving layup at a 37 overall. But once you start to go up, you start to see all of the animations that go up when he's upgrading his driving layup, which makes him get to an 82 overall and affect your close shot, your post control, your mid range, your free throw, your pass accuracy, your ball handle, your speed with ball, perimeter defense, speed, agility, strength, and vertical. Everything went up because he upgraded his driving layup to a 99 overall. So yes, this actually makes this builder a little more complicated the NBA 2K24 because things are way more connected compared to the other one. Now, at the same time, I don't think it's way more connected. I think now the attributes that go up, so like if you upgrade your driving layup and usually like your ball handle goes up, now the attributes that go up with your ball handle goes up too when the ball handle starts to hit a certain thing. They didn't do that in NBA 2K24, but it seems like they did that in NBA 2K25. But there's a way to finesse this. And the way to finesse this is through cap breakers. Now, cap breakers, for example, I'm gonna read this to you. Let's say your ball handle attribute is maxed out at 85. You can apply two cap breakers to play with an 87 ball handle rating and also unlock access to any animations, badges, or takeovers that require an 87 ball handle. Now, they did try to put some restrictions on the cap breakers, but I'm gonna explain this to you how you can finesse it. Each attribute can be increased to maximum of five above its cap. So you can go for five. So if you go, like they say in their example, 85, you can take your ball handle all the way up to a 90 ball handle from 85. But then again, put another restriction on it saying you can use a cap breaker on an attribute up to its max potential rating allowed by your build's height, weight, and wingspan which is shown in the My Player Builder while allocating your attribute potential. So if your wingspan and your size of your build say you only can get a max of an 89 a ball handle, but you put it at an 85, you only can use plus four to that cap to make it to the 89. You can't go plus five to make it to a 90. And then finally, you must be able to progress the attribute to its max potential rating before applying a cap breaker. So if you do have it at an 85, but you didn't upgrade it yet to an 84, you can't start putting the cap breakers on it till you actually get it to 85. But from the missed thing that you might have missed from Brute, it's the same thing that kind of everybody's missing about these cap breakers. So I'm gonna show you in NBA 2K24's Builder. Now this is my hybrid defender. And I'm gonna go in here just to show you, like I say, same six dies, so you see what the max cap is, but you will see it when we get up in here. So you see my highest overall attribute is my defensive rebound, right? So in theory, the way cap breakers work is that you actually go down five. So instead of 93, I can put it at an 88. And then once I get this to 88 and unlock my cap breakers, then I can push this with the cap breakers all the way back to 93. And that makes sense. It seems so easy. But the thing that people are missing and what's going to be extremely big in NBA 2K25, the way everything is connected, what people don't think about is when I upgrade my defensive rebound, it automatically upgraded my offensive rebound. 
So now, if I go down five of my offensive rebound, one, two, three, four, five. Now I say even more attributes being able to use the cap breaker to get my defensive rebound all the way up to a 93. But since NBA 2K25 has so many things connected, now you would be able to lower at all those 11, 12, 25 attributes that were connected you can lower everything down by five if it's not where you want it to be. And then you can use that cap breaker just to individually upgrade that, like mine on this case is defensive rebound back to a 93 without actually upgrading this offensive rebound. So now you have more attributes to spread around. On top of that, if you see, just using this build, if I take everything, the three ones that I wanna have, let's say I got my strength to a 90, 85, bring this down to an 88 and then bring my block to an 87. Now I can do things on this build that I wasn't. Now I can possibly take my driving dunk. I can say, just say I wanna go to an 80 driving dunk to get a better driving dunk. Just say I just wanna do that. Then you still got now my pass accuracy on this build was though. I could bring the pass accuracy up to 75. Now I wanna build my speed up so it can be faster on defense. I can bring it up. We don't have acceleration no more, it's agility. But just say I wanted my vertical higher. I could bring my vertical higher. I had a low free throw, so on here now I can use this to get my free throw higher because we know free throws are going to be harder on NBA 2K25. Then you can do whatever you want to do. I can either go the opposite way. I can take all the stuff down and put it all towards steel. It doesn't matter. But since stuff is so much more connected in NBA 2K25, the cap breakers are going to be extremely more important because now it allows you to bypass that attribute caps or the connection of the attributes throughout the other parts of the builder. Now, as you look at the bottom of this paragraph, at the bottom of the page, it said, there are a total of 15 cap breakers available to earn through rep rewards. So you will only be able to get this through rep rewards. But on top of that, we have the max plus one badge perk. Now this badge perk boosts the badge one level above its max potential. So if you had a badge that was on gold, you can move it up to Hall of Fame. Now, you don't actually have to hit the attribute cap. It allows you to skip that and just upgrade it without it. So just say you need a 98 to get Legend Ankle Assassin, but you don't have a 98 bar handle. Even if you had a 97, this max plus one badge perk allows you to upgrade it to Legend Ankle Assassin. Now, this is going to be a game changer, and this is going to allow people to finesse the builder even more and get more attributes to their name. And I feel like it's really going to help those post scores because if you didn't know, post scores are going to be absolutely OP in NBA 2K25. So if you want to see why they're going to be OP, man, check out this video that I did, man, right here.